So maybe you sent some Bitcoin or perhaps someone sent some to you, but either way, the transaction is stuck. Uh, it's just showing in your wallet as unconfirmed. It's maybe been that way for a few days and you're wondering, you know, is the money lost? Is there something I need to do to speed things up? And why did this even happen in the first place? While this can be scary and confusing, especially for newbies, you know, the first time this happens, even for experienced uh, users, it's still something that happens from time to time because at the end of the day, you can't control the fees that someone sets when they send you funds. In this video, I'm just gonna quickly run through some things that you can do to speed up transactions that are uh, stuck. And you know, this will work with pretty much any hardware wallet, software wallet, or anything else like that. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe, and that way I can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So in this video, I'm just gonna run through a few different examples. Uh, there'll be chapter markers in the description as well as uh, you know chapter markers in the search bar on YouTube. The first thing I'll be looking at is replace by fee. That is useful in a situation where you have sent a transaction to someone else uh, and it's stuck unconfirmed. Uh, though this does require that your wallet supports replace by fee. The next thing I'll be looking at is child pays for parent. This is useful if someone has sent funds to you and they have set the fees too low. It's something you can do to speed up that transaction. I'll also be looking at another situation where you can use child pays for parent to speed up a transaction that you sent to someone else even if your wallet doesn't support replace by fee. Though uh, this will depend on how you have sent that transaction and I'll look at that there. And this last thing that I talk about is actually also really worthwhile to understand if you are intending to accept Bitcoin as a payment because it's important that you understand uh, how transactions can be changed before they are confirmed. Just to help make sure you don't get ripped off. All right, so for this video, basically we're just gonna use this wallet here. And what we can see is we have a uh, confirmed transaction that we have received. So that's confirmed, that's all fine. We've also got another received transaction that is actually not confirmed. And uh, that's no good, as well as a transaction that I have sent that is also stuck and unconfirmed. If we have a look at that transaction in a block explorer, we can actually see uh, that the fees are only 5.1 sats per byte and it's like almost 50 megabytes from the tip. And to get a sense of what that means, we can head over to mempool.space. These little cubes up the top represent the last couple of blocks. So we can actually see the fees for each of the last five blocks. And we can see that transactions with five sats per V byte are nowhere near that level. And if we have a look at a graph of the uh, mempool for about the last month, we can actually see that transactions in this five to six range would not have confirmed at any point really in the last month. So basically we're gonna have to do something about that transaction if we want to be able to receive those funds. So unless the software interface you're using supports both RBF and child pays for parent, you're probably going to have to use something like Electrum. If you're a hardware wallet user that you can do that easily and securely, and I've got instructions in the description for both Ledger and Trezor and a few others. And uh, if you're a software wallet user, your best bet is probably going to be to follow the process down the bottom of the Trezor Wiki, which basically just talks about how to use the seed phrase from your existing software wallet in Electrum. To be clear, any decent hardware wallet is going to work directly with Electrum, no entry of seeds required. Though I should also emphasize that if you are a software wallet user, you need to make very sure that you are verifying your installation of Electrum before you just go randomly punching your seed into some malware. So basically we can see that same account now in Electrum, we can see the confirmed transaction the uh, inbound one and the outbound. And this actually tells us the fees for both of them as well as how far they are from the tip. So yeah, those are definitely not gonna get confirmed anytime soon. So the first thing we'll look at is RBF. This is replace by fee. And if you're fortunate enough to have sent the transaction out with RBF on, which uh, both Ledger Live on desktop and Trezor Suite do by default, then this is the process for you. Though it's important to note that Ledger Live actually doesn't do this on mobile and I found that out the hard way this week. But anyway, that might change in the future. So basically what you can do is because RBF is enabled, we can just right click on the transaction and we can just select increase fee. And basically what we're doing here is we can say, okay, five was not enough. If you're watching a YouTube video about this, you probably wanna select ETA and choose how many blocks you want it to confirm in. So we might just say we want it to confirm within two blocks. And this checkbox here for final basically means that it's possible for us to disable RBF on this transaction. Maybe you're paying a vendor for something and they wanna make sure you can't cancel or change the transaction, but 
If you're just trying to bump fees, you can probably just leave that unchecked. So we'll say, okay. And uh, here we go. So this is the transaction we can see. And basically then we can just say sign just like you would any other transaction. So we just review that on our ledger. We can accept. And there we go. And then we can just say broadcast. And basically what happens now is this transaction will actually replace the original one that was in our transaction history and it now has a much higher fee. So RBF is useful if you're the one who sent the transaction. If someone else sent the transaction to you, that's where you can use child pays for parents. So if we select this inbound transaction, right click on it and say child pays for parent. So basically what this is going to do is create another transaction that sends these unconfirmed funds back to ourselves, but with a higher fee. Basically making it worthwhile for miners to include the previous transaction where the fees were too low in order to be able to receive the fees for this new transaction we're going to send. The advantage of using Electrum for this is that rather than having to calculate the size of the old transaction and the new one and work out how much fees you need to make that worthwhile, you can pretty much just use this slider to work out what fees you wanna set. So for this example, we'll just set it to ETA and let's say maybe I'm not in a super big hurry, but I would like to confirm in the next two blocks. So uh, the total fee rate will be 96 sats per byte. So you'll see here that the fees that are shown in this transaction are basically double what you had on the last screen. And that's not a mistake, that's normal. This transaction is paying for both itself as well as the previous transaction here, which was unconfirmed, which is now the output of this transaction. You'll also notice that replace by fee is set to true. And what that means is you can actually do things like use child pays for parent, try increasing the fees by a little bit. And if that's not enough, you can actually do a replace by fee transaction to try bumping them some more. So we'll just say sign, which is just the standard signing process for your hardware wallet. And we will say broadcast. Now, the thing you'll notice with these child pays for parents transactions is you actually end up with a new transaction in your transaction history with its own transaction ID. So the previous transaction has not actually been canceled or replaced. And, and there we go. So we can actually just see, even while I was talking, that previous transaction that I did the RBF on has now got one confirmation. The only other thing to be aware of with child pays for parent is if you go and view that transaction in a block explorer, it's basically gonna show the fees being really high. It's gonna show it being zero megabytes from the tip and say you're overpaying by tons. And again, this is normal because the block explorer has no knowledge of the previous transaction that you're paying for. So it just sees this as a single transaction, which will basically just float along zero megabytes from the tip until the total transaction fee for both this one and the parent transaction is enough to make it worth being included by miners. So there we go. So that inbound transaction that we uh, bumped the fee using child pays parent has now been confirmed. So the last thing I'll show you is two different types of transactions where you might have sent some funds to someone else but set the fees too low and used a wallet that did not enable replace by fee. And these two transactions look identical, but there's one key difference. While this first one will allow me to do a child pays for parent transaction, just the same as we saw before, this second one won't. And the reason why is that if we double click on both transactions, and the reason why is if we look over here on the left, this first transaction had two outputs. And that basically means I was sending less than the full available amount in my wallet to the recipient. And the remainder was returned to my wallet as change, which is this output here highlighted in yellow. Because there's some change, my wallet has an inbound transaction that I can use for a child pays for parent transaction. Whereas this transaction on the right, I actually sent the entire balance of the wallet to the recipient and there is no change amount coming back into my wallet. So while I can just say child pays for parent on this transaction, just overpay in fees to get it done while I'm doing the video in a hurry.
But unfortunately for this transaction, we can't actually do that. Basically in this situation, our only options are to wait for the transaction to either be uh, confirmed or to drop out of the mempool. That might take a couple of weeks uh, or to contact the person we sent the funds to and ask them to do a child pays for parent transaction. Though again, that may or may not actually be possible. The last thing I'll show you is something if you're really aware of if you are a vendor in that if you have someone paying you for something and they have enabled RBF and you can check that if you look at any decent block explorer like on, uh, on the Blockstream one, for example, it just tells you down the bottom, you know, unconfirmed RBF. And when I say decent, what I mean by that is if you compare this to say blockchain.com, it doesn't actually indicate RBF on here anywhere. And if someone has enabled RBF, they can actually double spend and cancel that transaction they have sent you. And if you use Electrum, it's literally something you can just right click and do. Now you can then just sign and broadcast that transaction. And basically it then just completely replaces and invalidates the previous one. And if we look for the original transaction on a block explorer, it simply won't be there anymore. So that means if you're someone who's receiving a Bitcoin payment, it's not enough to simply look at an unconfirmed transaction. Uh, if RBF is enabled, that transaction actually isn't final. You need to wait until you have at least one confirmation. And again, even on blockchains that have not implemented RBF, you need to consider all unconfirmed transactions to mean exactly that. They are not confirmed and uh, can still be undone until they have been included in at least a couple of blocks. If you want to avoid this happening in the first place, a really good website for that is mempool.space. Basically, it will show you uh, the last couple of blocks. If you look here, you've got some estimates for essentially uh, the fees you would need for an average transaction for a high priority that's, you know, in the next block or two, medium priority, so maybe the next hour or two, and low priority, so, you know, happy to wait a couple of hours. Uh, you know, they are just some recommendations for fees. Generally speaking, your wallet should do a pretty good job of this if you just leave it as the defaults. Most wallets will overpay by default for the sake of user experience. Uh, but look, you know, there are also some other situations where you might be wanting to just uh, move some Bitcoin around in your storage. And hey, if it takes a week or a month, uh, you know, that might be okay. You really just need to work out, you know, how much of a hurry you are in. And look, while I've used Electrum in this video, this sort of functionality is supported by an increasing number of Bitcoin wallets. And uh, if you just search for RBF or child price for parent or fee bumping and that sort of stuff uh, with your wallet, you might find that it actually supports it already. If none of this works for you, your funds aren't just gone. Uh, basically, your funds have actually not left your wallet yet. Even though your uh, wallet shows it as being unconfirmed, it doesn't allow you to spend those funds again. If the transaction is still unconfirmed after a couple of weeks, it will actually get to a point where different nodes in the network start dropping it from their mempool. And uh, eventually those funds will just find their way back into your wallet. So there you go. Hope that clears things up and at the very least helps you to maybe uh, have a bit more clarity uh, around what is happening and be a bit less worried that your funds have just disappeared. Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.